Friends, welcome back. Lesson uh, four, I think. Under 10 minutes, try to explain the central limit theorem. It's probably what allows us to do statistics. Without it, you can't really use all these tables. Actually, it's what allows idiots to do statistics because you don't have to understand the, me the mechanism or the properties of the distribution. You just assume it's a Gaussian distribution. So what does it say? There are two uh, ways to look at it. The first one is to say that I have a observation x1, x2, uh, xn. So n observation drawn from any distribution, provided assume it's the same distribution, not to complicate things, and finite variance. All each observation has finite variance. In other words, they, they, they are drawn from a finite variance ensemble. Then the sum, as n becomes large, becomes a Gaussian. That's what it tells you. There's a second version. If they're not finite variance, then there's another distribution they converge to. And we can call it the stable distribution. That's another discussion because the second class belongs to power laws, fat tails, and fat tails are much more complicated or actually easier <laughs> analytically. But uh, there's, uh, it's more, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not commonly studied. So this is what pervades that science and pseudoscience called statistical. Uh, methods. So the the uh, so in other words, how is sum? You remember the law of large numbers. The large numbers tells you how a sum behaves. It becomes more stable than uh, the components. Sorry, an average becomes more stable than components. Here, a sum or an average, same thing converges to a Gaussian. So if x1, x2, they all have distribution like this or like that, OK, whatever it is, under summation, it will be that bell shape. And you can normalize, of course, to have sigma of 1 and mean of 0. So whatever the shape of the initial distribution, it could be like that. You can have a multimodal distribution for x. You add them up after a certain number of n becomes a Gaussian, which is why sampling theory, it's, 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 it simplifies a lot of things because it allows you to use the properties of a Gaussian and flow them back to that ensemble. So let me show you a few case studies of how that happens. And then we'll give an example of how that doesn't happen. Friends, let's build a distribution here that has the properties you want. You, you can, uh, and then see what happens under summation. So I'll start here with, uh, with, uh, with a very simple example. Let's take the easiest distribution we know, the, namely the uh, uniform distribution. All observations are uh, you know, equal, equi, equi, uh, probable. They all have the same probability between zero and one. So let's say R equal random variate. And I draw from a discrete uniform distribution. So, and, and, and specify between zero and 10. So all Oh, it's discrete, but you can make it continuous. Discrete is easier to understand. Um, uh, draws between 0 and 10. So I can I do R, I get 4. I do R, I get 2. So, And if I do a table, R, let's say 10 to the 5, and then do a histogram, what I get with that? You see the flat distribution. Okay, so we saw the shape of distribution, the initial distribution. Now, 
r plus r okay r plus r what happens look at the shape of the new distribution it's a triangle i have two observations i have two a random variable x1 x2 and look what we're getting no no <laughs> connection to the initial shape why it's very simple i have this goes between 0 and 10 so the the sum okay will be also you know uh, adding two things between 0 and 10 the most probable is definitely going to be somewhere around 10 because you can get 10 with 0 and 10 1 and 9 you get a lot of combination but 20 or 0 you only get if you're two tens and on one and in the first case or double zeros in the second case now let's continue here and let's do three variables okay three variables you <laughs> you almost have a gaussian distribution in shape let me make it five plus r plus r <clears throat> And look, with five uh, variables, it's as close to a normal, it goes there very quickly. I can do it with, uh, let's repeat the same exercise with a uh, random walk, zero, one, you draw zero, one, coin tosses, anything, plus one, minus one, however you want to look at it. Let me make it a random walk, zero, one, Bernoulli distribution with probability of half, and it's going to produce zero, one. Okay, this is, let's call this uh, W. Okay, and we do here, uh, but visibly it's going to be flat. <laughs> Zeros and ones would have equal probability. I do table R 10, 5 histo histogram. Look. Uh, no, sorry, table W R. Uh, okay, equal distribution. Now try W plus W. W plus W visibly, as we saw yesterday with the law of large numbers, you're going to get zero and zero, uh, one, and, one and one at the extremes, the least likely, and more likely zero, one or one, zero, because you, you have two ways to get it. So let's try this. And sure enough, that's what we get. So the random marks start to look like a distribution that's different. We add W, three variables. Yeah, okay, three variables. We have to go to uh, odd numbers to get the peak effect. Okay, you already <laughs> start to see a bell curve. This is pretty much what we're talking about now is a convergence of the binomial to the normal. I added a lot of Ws here. And you see what's happening. All right, we already have a bell curve. Now, if you're drawing from a uh, distribution that is sort of fat tailed, I mean, that is fat tailed in the fat tailed class, you're going to converge very slowly. So uh, we won't have time here to go through the whole exercise. We'll do it again, but let's do a Pareto distribution that does eventually converge by the law. Of, by, by the CLT because it has finite variance and let's call it V okay a random variant Pareto distribution and we do table V for one variable a histogram you're going to see it's a distribution that is has a certain shape I do V plus V Closer to normal, V plus V plus V plus V plus V 
let me reduce here the speed. So one thing you will note is that distributions of fat tail convert to a Gaussian but very slowly. So thank you for, uh, let me stop sharing. Uh, thank you for uh, attending this discussion again. Uh, next time we'll do correlations. Thanks, have a great day and bye for now.